I get the chance to talk to students a lot, all types of students from all over the world. And often I'm talking about math and science. And I say something that usually surprises people. I will tell students and other people that I get goosebumps doing math. I always have. Even as a kid, I loved doing math problems. Well, uh, people sometimes say, well, how'd that happen? And I tell a story. You know, we all are the products of our childhood experiences, things that happened to us as kids. And I was very fortunate to have really wonderful parents who enjoyed reading to me when I was a very little kid. And I started reading very early and loved the reading. Well, somehow my parents decided they wanted to see how to connect the reading to playing with, with uh, money and with objects involving math. And before I knew it, when I was very, very young, I was solving math word problems uh, involving money, loving it, loving it, understanding that if I had three dimes and my dad had two quarters and we put all of our money together, that we'd have 80 cents and learning later on that that was the same as 80% of a dollar or that it was eight over 10. And, and so all of a sudden I began to see how language and math came together. But I also began to understand how you could think about math in anything that you do. If you look at the number of people in a room, if you look at the weight of people, if you look at the room itself and you come to understand shapes and you see rectangles and squares and you think about the area in a room and the perimeter, all these terms that you hear in some, in some class, in geometry or in algebra. And, and for me, what was interesting was most students didn't like math. And in class, as a little kid, I would watch other students either being bored or frustrated because they weren't, were not understanding the problem. And so I did something that, that was especially helpful to me in deciding what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I began to tutor kids. I began to get really excited about the idea that maybe I could help somebody else to understand a problem or to grasp a concept or to get excited about the work. I wanted more people excited about math because I just thought it was fun. And, and what became clear to me was that it was much harder to explain something to another student than it was simply for me to understand it myself. And aha, then I realized, here's my challenge. I have to figure out how to use language that is so clear and simple that I can explain a concept because I understand the concept myself well, and I can get somebody else not only to understand whatever it is the teacher's talking about, but then to help that student learn how to solve the problem and to develop confidence. Because what was also clear was that because I'd had exposure to math at home and reading, and because I was always solving math problems, I was getting better and better. And, and the lesson there was we learn to do by doing. I found that the more I read, the better a reader I became. And the more I enjoyed reading, quite frankly, the more reading I did. The same thing in mathematics. When a student seems to feel less than confident about the math, it usually is because they've gotten confused by a problem or have not had success. And so all of a sudden, by the time I was 13, I was in a special math program at a university for the summer. And the professor came into the class, this was at Tuskegee, and it was a National Science Foundation program for smart kids in math. And all of a sudden, first of all, I realized I wasn't the smartest person in the world, that there were a lot of people who had done even more than I had, and I was inspired by that. But the professor came in, and he put a math problem on the board, and we all looked at it, and nobody could solve it. And he said, see me when you can solve it. And he left. And people were really frustrated because they were thinking, I mean, the teacher's supposed to help you solve the problem. And his point was, no, you work on it. And I found myself less frustrated and much more fascinated because what he was saying was I had the ability, if I really worked on it, to solve that problem, even though I didn't have a clue about, about how to do it. And so we spent days working on this problem in statistics. And what I learned was that even though we didn't get the complete answer, we learned so much in struggling with the issue. Well, the reason math is so fascinating to me in general is that it teaches you to look at problem, a problem from different perspectives and not necessarily to be so frustrated because 
you find yourself not able to solve it. I also found as I went through college, quite frankly, was that math was at the foundation of all the other sciences and engineering. Whether you're going to study chemistry or physics, even when you look at something like accounting, you know, from my point of view, the problems in those areas are really applied math problems in engineering, quite frankly, or in physics. And, and so I realized that math became somewhat of a gatekeeper to many other areas. And I took my interest in helping other people to do math and my understanding of the relationship between math and other disciplines as a sign for me to think about really focusing on teaching math and then to focus on helping more students to become interested in math and science and engineering. And what happened as I got older was this. I began to realize that many of the problems that we face in, in our world, not just in our country, whether they're problems involving economics and understanding the, the challenges we face with, with financial situations in America, or we are looking at the probability that we'll see certain kinds of environmental issues in different countries, or we're thinking about health disparities, that often such areas as statistics and math will be very important because the scientists and the engineers use the tools of math in solving problems. Well, I'm at a university that really enjoys uh, seeing students excel, and about half of our students are in math, science, and engineering. And what is especially important to think about when you, when you think about producing students who will become scientists is that for any student, being able to do well in math in high school and then in college will determine in large part the ability of that student to become a physician or an engineer or a scientist, but also an accountant, as I said, or an economist or somebody in the business world, wherever you go, more and more, you're going to see people in mathematics or people with math backgrounds. If you think about people in the social sciences, if you're interested in things involving sociology or psychology, again, the quantitative methods piece will be very important because we don't solve problems and draw conclusions based on anecdotal information. We really do need to be able to look at data, for example, and analyze it and use statistical measures and look at the average or look at the, the highest frequency or look at the probability that something will happen. And more and more, as people become these different professions, whether it is in the social sciences or the natural sciences or engineering, they see the importance of mathematics. What's been fascinating to me over the past 40 years is to understand that even in my work as an administrator at a college, as president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC, math comes in handy every day in the work that I do. Whether talking about issues involving the budget or looking at what we call analytics, how you go about analyzing trends and in, in what's happening at the university, and even when I think about trying to encourage people to go into different disciplines, let me give you an example. Um, we work heavily with the National Security Agency. A lot of my students are interested in intelligence work and defense. And uh, NSA said to us, we need you to help us produce more mathematicians of all kinds because uh, this will be very important to have people from different perspectives, people of all races, people of all ethnicities who know enough math that they can be involved in helping to serve their country. There's nothing more noble, I think, than serving one's country or saving a life or working on the problems that can help life to be better for all of us. And, and what I found is that when working with NSA and talking with students, the first thing they'll say is, well, how will I use the math? And when students get chances to, to have internships and to work in places uh, around the country, but in uh, the, the, the science and technology infrastructure of the country, places like the National Institutes of Health and NASA or the National Security Agency, all of a sudden they begin to see how the math and science they've had in their classes will relate to the real world. And for me, explaining that foundation of math for all these areas has always been exciting. Now, what I tend to do when I'm talking to students, whether they are 11, or 20 is to give them a math problem. If you're going to talk about math, why not simply give people a math problem? Here's an example of the problem I would give. And what I always tell students is don't answer immediately. I want you to take the time to think about it. The problem says this. And remember, as I give you this math problem, I'm getting goosebumps. 
goosebumps. 29 children are in a class. 20 have dogs, 15 have cats. How many have both a, a dog and a cat? I actually found that problem in the Baltimore Sun, and it was saying that many teachers and others were having problems with it. Well, for most people, even people who like math, you'll find that they'll want to give you an answer quickly. And the fact is that most of the time, that answer is not correct. Uh, what has to happen is, from my perspective, uh, is that the teacher or whoever's working with you on the problem has to say, well, draw it. And the first thing people will do if they've had algebra is to give me Venn diagrams, right? And I'm saying, no, I don't want Venn diagrams. I want you to see the children, the dogs, and the cats. Because I want people to understand that math can be related to real life in a way that it helps to explain the world. And so if you can see three rows, 10 with kids, uh, with dogs, another 10 kids with dogs, and then, and then put down the other nine kids, and then look at how the cats relate to that. What you'll have to see, because I'm not gonna give you the answer, is that it takes strong thinking skills, it takes patience, and it takes the ability to understand how one thing connects to another. The foundation for me in math Thinking skills, reading skills, the importance of language, having the patience to look at the problem from different perspectives. I can't think of any profession that's more interesting, more fascinating than mathematics. Thank you.